everybody. It's been a long time coming, but uh, we're ready to apply the details to the control surfaces. And then in some other videos, we're going to do the wings, which have lots of detail. Anyhow, uh, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is mark off where the uh, leading edge uh, rollover panel is. That's the raised panel. Uh, which uh, you can see where the hinges are. I've pre-cut some templates out from uh, cardstock. Uh, this is what we can see in the video right now and I'm using it to actually align those leaning edge panels. Also, it allows me to look where the rivets are gonna lay. I do this on both the top and the bottom because I'm going to do it to all four all at the same time and spray them all simultaneously. Now I have the uh, panel lines. I can use the uh, auto masking tape which has a real sharp clean edge and is perfect for doing this kind of thing. Once we have the tape placed on both sides it's time just to use some uh, cheap masking paper, magazine pages, whatever you have on hand to uh, just mask where the uh, rivets are going to be. When we're doing these details, we have to do them in layers. Um, you know, first you obviously have to sand the surface, get it all nice and prepped. Then in this case, we put the uh, leading edge rollover panel on. Then we'll have to apply the uh, panel line tape for the uh, trim tabs and get those done. And then we can move on to the rivets. Now that everything is masked, I gave uh, all four control surfaces the first coat, which was very, very light, and this puts a seal between the masking tape edge and the surface we're spraying. I then used the heat gun uh, using quite a distance away, and all I'm doing here is trying to get the primer just to cook off a little bit. This helps with the uh, next coats, and it allows me to speed up the process. Here's the important thing. You must keep the spray bomb the exact same distance away from each part that you're spraying. Use the same amount of speed from right to left, left to right, whichever way you're doing it. And decide up front how many layers of paint you're going to put on. I found that using the regular uh, auto primer that I'm using, which is Rust-Oleum in this case, I find that four coats to five coats is perfect for rivets plus leading edge slats, whatever you're doing. All right, now it's time to uh, do the trim tabs. So we're just gonna put some pretend uh, panel lines in there. I'm using a one thirty second of an inch uh, graphics tape, which is a chart pack graphic tape. And first, because it's cold in the shop, I'm just going to quickly uh, give it a light warm up. Nothing dramatic, just want to uh, get a little heat in there because it's very small tape. All right, it's pretty simple. We're just going to stretch the tape just a tiny bit just a little bit of tension I'm going to just basically place it on the line dab a couple of places so it stays in position I'm initially just going to cut this with scissors and then just gently start to run it out now you see this one got just a tad of curving it so there. all fixed so I overlap I don't worry about trying to get it all perfect and now we're just gonna lift this a little bit brand new exacto blade right on the line and boom done now we go the other way exact same again and this time we'll overlap that original piece, press it down, push, 
and the tension and cut. And now, if you look at it, we can just cut on this side of the line. And this should pick up. And there we go. One trim tab. This is the leading edge we did uh, yesterday. It's nice and raised. It's probably, I don't know, 64th of an inch or a fraction of a millimeter. So I, uh, I'm gonna just put the masking, tip, uh, masking paper that we had from yesterday when we did the leading edge. I'm just gonna put it like that. So we don't get a tight line, but we get some protection against the leading edge. So I've given, uh, these two trim tabs, just a very, very light locking coat, just to lock up the uh, tape without drowning it, because if you drown it, it's gonna get underneath the tape and lift it. And now I'm just gonna give it a few progressive coats, probably a total of four, I think should do it. And here we go. Simple as that. Off camera, I've designed the uh, rivet layout using a uh, Fusion 360. Um, it's pretty easy to do, uh, just using the three views, you know, do the outline of the control surface. In this case, what's on the screen is the uh, ailerons. And then uh, just place your rivets and uh, run them through the laser. Or if you don't have a laser, use a punch or go to a graphic store and they'll uh, cut them out for you. There's also a machine, I think it's called a creek cut or something like that. It's used in uh, scrapbooking. And uh, you could do the rivets uh, using one of those things. And they're fairly cheap, I think, 150 bucks or so forth. Anyhow, whatever, whatever it takes, that's what you need to do. I've laser cut the rivets out on some uh, shelving paper. This is like a very light tack uh, paper and it's uh, great for rivets so now this is the super critical part of the whole project and what i'm gonna do is make sure we get perfectly aligned so what i want to do is get this end perfectly aligned like the bring this one down it's really uh, kind of awkward coming down the trailing edge like that. Make sure we're nicely lined up. I'm just going to put this little bit of tape here. So when I peel it all back, hopefully I don't get any movement. <laughs> yeah, famous last words. So what I'm going to do is holding where there's no rivets i'm going to try and get this bottom edge lined up now this is a little touchy for now Might be just a fraction off, but I think it will be okay. I'm just going to move it along gently, bently. I'm going to try and pull this back without moving too much. Checking the alignment on the trailing edge. And it looks like I'm going to be okay, I think. So I can move a little bit more. I'm going to make sure I'm still lined up. Yes, I am. I can get down. And we don't have to worry too much about kind of bubbles at this point. It's not like we're trying to lay a flat surface to a flat surface. All we have to do is make sure our rivets are perfect. And it looks like we pulled that one off. 
So now we just have to smooth it all out, triple check that all the rivets are laying absolutely perfectly flat against the uh, control surface. And then we flip it over and put the reversed image one on and carry on with the rest of them. It's just basically repeat, repeat, repeat. And this is why you need to triple check your work. Uh, as you can see, just right there, there's about half a millimeter of the edge of the uh, tacky shelf paper that didn't go straight to the end of the uh, control surface. So I've just applied a little bit of masking tape because if I didn't, and once I spray this, then you're just going to get a little raised ridge line once we peel off the uh, paper. So just be aware of those kind of things. All right, now I'm just going to do a uh, mist coat. Give my kind of shake. And this is just going to be a very light uh, binding coat. Just checking everything before I do it. Clear the nozzle. And here we go. So now I'm just going to repeat what I did for the uh, panel lines and the uh, leading edge uh, panel. Uh, the only difference here is I want some really, really high defined rivets. I can always send them down if, if they're too high. So what I did, I think I used uh, four coats of the regular auto primer. Then I used a couple of quick passes of the high build primer. And uh, anyhow, the rivets came out absolutely fabulous. So using the heat gun in between coats to uh, pretty much uh, stiffen up the paint, I was able to move along pretty quick and get a very high build on without any lifting of the, uh, the uh, tacky paper. And uh, as you can see in, in the video, it's really a, a lot of primer on there, but this is what I want when I'm doing rivets. All right, here's a moment of truth. We, uh, we have all the templates on. I'm gonna uh, start to remove. And we're gonna see if we've got enough uh, rivet depth. So what I'm gonna do is just peel this back carefully. Oh yeah. We got lots of depth. So now we're just going to gently peel this back. And we got some beautiful rivets. Let me know in the comments what you think of this method and uh, how about a like or two. Helps the channel. Thank you. Being very careful now. All right, so we have the rivets. I hope oh, you can see them. See how they are now? Got a light on them. So these are just about perfect. Uh, they look exactly like the real one, about the right depth, and uh, very, very pleased with it. The uh, trim tab, unfortunately, you, you only see the uh, the blue uh, marker but the trim tab has uh, come out pretty good so let's get all these off and uh, we'll go from there okay there you can see the quality of the rivets this is the aileron moving over to the flaps you can see the just beautiful So, except for that little bit of uh, 
peeled paint there, which I'll just lightly, lightly sand. And that's no real big deal if, because it's going to come out positive in the mold, uh, which can be sanded in the mold to uh, get rid of that. But uh, all in all, it's uh, real sweet. So I'm very pleased with all those. So next is to uh, make the parting planes, wax them up and clean them up and make the molds. <laughs> 